Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Out YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my first set of cards using the July 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made these and get a couple tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here today. In yesterday's video, I shared with you a look at the new sheet load of cards and gave you a quick look at the first set of cards I made. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made them. Now, not only is my process video going live today, but all of my collaborators will also be sharing their creations today. Make sure when you're done here that you check out all of the links in my description box below. This month's sheet load features a fun fold where you can see the inside of the card from the front. In today's process video, I do go over some specific instructions on the scoring and folding and cutting to get your card base just right so you can make your card sets. Most of my video is a voiceover, but that portion I do stop and give pretty specific instructions. Now, if I leave you with any questions at the end of my process video today, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Here is a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. I got out two pieces of pattern paper from the Santa Fe Garden Hot Buy Pad from Michaels, four sheets of white cardstock, one sheet of blue cardstock, and two pinks. For my stamp set today, I will be using this adorable cuddly cacti stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and I got out my VersaFine ink and my Recollections black detail embossing powder. For my coloring, I will be using my Arteza Everblend alcohol markers. If I add anything later to these, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. And of course, I will also be using the July 2020 sheet load of cards printable. You can download this for free if you're a subscriber and all you need to do is watch yesterday's video to find out how to do that. I do have that video linked in the description box below. Okay, I want to pause from the voiceover right now because I want to talk specifically about how you cut, score if you want to, and fold your card bases. It is different this month because you're going to be able to see the inside of the card from the front. So there are a few ways you can do it and I thought I would show you those. The first thing you have to do no matter what is cut your paper in half to five and a half inches tall. Now, if you don't have a scoring tool or you don't wanna score your cards, that is okay. Just keep in mind, you do need to fold it in half before you cut off the left side. So I'm gonna fold my card here. And here we just have a regular card base. Now what I'm gonna do is open it up, move my card into the one inch mark over here, and you can cut it off either side. It just makes sure when you fold it that the front is correct. I'm gonna cut off that inch this I will keep for my sentiments, so don't get rid of this. This piece is right here and you can adjust it to whatever size you need. And here is the base of my card. So again, this one did not take any scoring. Now if you do have a scoreboard of some sort and you want to use it, you would just score your card like you're going to fold it in half. And then you don't need to fold it yet. And then we're going to bring back in our trimmer and cut off that same one inch. And there's your card base. What you don't want to do is cut the inch off 
and then fold it in half because then you're not gonna have a card where you can see the inside. You're just gonna have a smaller regular fold card. If you have any questions on this, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. But for now, we'll go ahead and get back to the rest of the process. I just finished folding and cutting the sentiment strip off each of the card bases. You may have noticed on the sheet load of cards instructions that it says to cut those sentiment strips to two and three quarters inches wide. For now, I left my strips that full size because my sentiments are different widths and I wanted to adjust it to what I needed in the end. The next thing I'm going to do is cut the two pieces of pattern paper per the instruction on the cutting guides. I'm not going to give a lot of dimensions here because you can download that free printable, but the first thing I do is cut two five and a quarter inch tall strips and then I cut those down for the final pieces I needed per the cutting it guide. I do have quite a bit of the pattern paper left over and I will be back later this month for my new sheet load leftovers feature to show you what I'm going to do with that. Next I'm going to cut down my two CS2 pieces and those will be the mats for all of my pattern paper strips. Now there is a small leftover at the bottom of this page but otherwise you use the complete width for all eight of the pieces that you're going to cut out. Now on this last one here, I try to cut it and hold it with my fingers, but it was a little bit crooked. So you'll see that the next time I cut that last piece, I got out a piece of removable tape to hold that down while I did the cutting. And now it's time for CS1. The original instructions call for eight pieces that are three inches by one and a quarter, but like I mentioned before, I haven't yet cut down my sentiment strips. So what I did here was cut four strips that were one and a quarter inches, and later those will be divided into eight pieces when I map my sentiments. Once all of the pieces were ready, it was time to start assembling the cards. The first thing I did was mat each of my pattern papers with the coordinating size cardstock mat. Then I got my card bases back out and started adding those to the card bases. The skinny strip goes on the inside and the wider piece goes on the front. I don't know about you, but am I the only one who has to turn that card upside down for that skinny strip inside to make sure I get it in the right place? I'm going to start off my stamping by doing the sentiments. The set came with six sentiments, so I used two of those twice. Two that I thought were probably more frequent occasions. One was your birthday and the other one was the sending hugs. I placed that to the right of those white sentiment strips until I had all eight of those stamped. You may notice that before I ink up each of my stamps today, I do rub my fingers across those. And that is just because these stamps are new and that usually helps them take the ink better. Now it's time to stamp those images and get them colored. I chose a couple of the cactus images that went with the sentiments that I have chosen. The first one, it says, thanks for being my friend, even when I'm prickly. And I chose that little cactus that was giving a wink. I also got out some pots to go with it. Now, originally I was gonna use the VersaFine Onyx Black ink and heat emboss it in black so it would help me stay inside the lines when coloring. In the end, I just got out my Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I am just gonna try it without embossing. For today's stamping, I'm going to do some very basic masking. I am pretty new to this, so I didn't wanna go crazy. I do wanna make it look like my cactuses are actually sitting inside of my pots and not just kind of standing on top of them. So once I ink up and stamp my pot, 
I get out a little scrap of scotch blue removable tape and place that right along the top edge of the pot. That way, whatever I stamp on the tape, I can pull back up. Once I've done that, I ink up the cactus that I want to use and I make sure to just put the very bottom of the cactus onto that scotch blue removable tape when I stamp it. And then you'll see when I pull that tape back, the bottom of the cactus isn't stamped and it looks like it's sitting right inside that pot. The next pot is slightly curved at the top. I just made sure to cover up the center portion of that curve with my scotch blue removable tape. And now it's time to do the coloring. On screen are the names and numbers of the first colors I used. I will let you know I am no pro at these. I just do what I find works for me. And what that is, I take the lighter one and start where the shadows would be and just flick in from the outside. Then I go back in with my dark marker and do the same thing, but I only put the color about halfway in. Once that's placed down, I bring back in the lighter marker and I blend those two colors together. Then I just fill in the rest of that white area with that lighter marker. I'm gonna go ahead and bring back in the darker and add some extra shading where it would be on the pot. And I blend that last shading out just a little bit with the lightest marker. For the cactus itself, I pick out a couple different greens and you can see those on screen. And then I do basically the same thing with the green on the cactus. I start by adding my light color green where I eventually want my shadows to be. And then I come in with the darker green and go over that same area, but not quite as far in. Then I just bring back in the lighter and I blend those and color in the rest of the white. I do like to go back in with that darkest and add a little bit more shading and blend it out just a little bit. Now with these markers, I do find that they work best if you have a layer beneath them. So that's why I start out with that lightest color. Otherwise, I can't get them to blend nicely. But I will tell you for the price, these definitely work for me. I decided to add a little blush to the cheeks of my cactus, so I brought in the watermelon pink and just put a couple dots right below each eye. I meant to show you how I colored the other image, but unfortunately I did not turn my camera on. I used the same colors except for the flower on the top of the cactus. I used the two pinks that are shown here on screen. Unfortunately, I don't have the die set that goes with these stamps, but they ended up being pretty easy to fussy cut out. When I run around the cactuses and the pots, I just left a small white border. I always think that this helps the image stand out from the pattern paper background or the cardstock that it is on. Here's a look at all of the final pieces and the sentiments that I paired them with. Now it's time to get those sentiment strips cut down. I started out by cutting down the one with the sending hugs at the two and three quarters that the cutting diagram calls for. I know that I'm gonna place my pot to the left of the sentiment, so that leaves me enough room to do that. Now on the longer one, I wasn't sure if two and three quarters would work, but it actually did end up working very nicely. This pot though, later you'll see me place it above the sentiment. Once I had all of the sentiments cut, I then matted them with the blue cardstock. I placed one sentiment to each side of the strip, and then later you'll see me, I just cut these down so there's an even border on the other side. 
You know that I love my Big Fiskars rotary trimmer, but this little guillotine trimmer is so handy for cutting stuff like this. On the original sheet load sketch, I had a suggestion for an embellishment behind that sentiment. I originally thought of a thread nest. I didn't want to add fiber or thread to each of my cards, so I got out this die I have that resembles a thread nest. I will be cutting it from this vellum, which is my medium weight vellum. I do have it linked below if you want to check it out. Once those were all die cut, it was time to start putting the cards together. I chose a sentiment for the card, and once I had the placement where I liked it, I put some art glitter glue on the back of my vellum die cut. This dries nice and clear, so it's great for vellum like this. Once that was placed down, I really didn't have to give it any extra time to dry because I will be placing adhesive on the back of the sentiment tag and that helps hold both pieces down. To add my cactus to the card front, I wanted to give it a little lift. So I got out these foam squares from the Dollar Tree, added some to the back and placed my cactus. I just love the price of these foam squares. I then laid down my second sentiment and got that card ready as well. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made these cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators. Their channels and Instagrams and blogs are linked below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.